and Little Mint and I bring to you today a, a top four deck profile from the one and only Gabriel Milina and Patrick Hoban. All right, so anything you guys want to say before we get into this dual profile? Um, Shout out to everyone. Yeah. Who helped me rebuild my deck after I lost it on Friday. <laughs> and shout out to the random person in Brazil that just came up a bunch of money. <laughs> or threw it away. Enjoy those book of moments. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy, guys. Uh, shout out to Fetty, you know, our teammate. Yeah, who, you Fetty. know, did really good. Um, and shout out to Pat for coming a, a week early to, for us to test and do really well. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, All right. Billy. He let me ulti. Uh, Can't thrust. forget Billy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into this deck profile. All right. So we played three of like, the best on chain cards. Uh, these special summon from your hand. So <clears throat> you got to max out on them. And then these are Etelis and Rotas. And then <clears throat> the one of utility cards. Um. I can talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> this one's the only break in the deck. Um, it's fine to have one break, I think, but it, it it's definitely a break. We liked Rikia a lot, um, but we just didn't play it because we ended up playing tour guides. Um, we were really torn on tour guide because uh, the main thing is it's a normal summon. Like it doesn't work with like having this in hand, having this in hand. Um, but it is a one card starter. I think the thing you're balancing is like one card starters versus like easier to have follow up when you do get stopped there. Um, also on Yu-Gi-Oh scope, uh, it was like <laughs> five percent lower uh, win rate for tour guide than it was for like all the unchained cards. Um, so that really pulled me away from tour guide, but then it went up a little bit. And that pulled us into a dice roll. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, even, so we played Tour Guide. <laughs> yeah. We, we thought about playing three of this one, because um, it's just really good if, like, one of your combos gets stopped. If, like, if it's an unchained card, you can still pop it and keep going. So, yeah, we really considered the Tour Guide. And, yeah, so, Fetty, Fetty actually, <laughs> <laughs> I, we, like, I was pretty convinced we weren't going to play Tour Guide, and I didn't have a Phoenix Rhino Warrior. And Pat was looking for his one just in case. And you went to the vendor. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then we went to the vendor, and he went to buy one. And then Fetty made Pat buy two for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, he made us roll the dice to play it. Because we really were convinced not to play it. Um, and then we played for the traps. We only played five. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the traps. Pat likes them a lot. He thinks they're Etelis. Um, but they're still, like, pretty good to draw. It's just they're the only cards that really break your hand. Because the monsters usually work well with each other. Uh, you play three of this one because it's an interruption. And you play two of this one because it's pretty much Etelis. Um... And then for the Unchained good cards, it was the three tour guide and the Phoenix Rhino Warrior. Uh, so we we do only do the one break, but this isn't a break. Um, this is just a normal summon because yeah. it still works really well with the deck. So that's why we went with tour guide. You could set it as well, right? Yeah, you can set it. You can normal summon it and destroy it and then send the guy or set the trap. It, it does some stuff. It's also good going second sometimes like into a deck destroy. that destroys. Um, like Runic, they won't be able to destroy your other cards other than the Phoenix Rhino Warrior if you start putting bodies up. And then we played the three pot of P, any card in the, in the deck, and Foolish. Uh, Pat wasn't a fan of Foolish because usually when you draw it and you draw a playable, it doesn't really do anything because the deck does it all when it's playing. It's like Tear and Foolish. Yeah, it's, like it's a, yeah, something that yeah that, that's pretty do. much what he was saying with it. But like I said, my, the biggest problem with the deck, I felt like was drawing like these cards and not drawing a way to pop them. So if we were already playing, I was okay with this card being like not that good. Uh, it was, could be follow up or anything. Uh, but that's pretty much all the unchain. Yeah, like the unchain and just pretty much the engine cards. Um, the deck was really consistent. It's like two card combo deck unless you draw tour guide. And you know these cards are like nine ofs. These cards, so like you just always draw them together and it's usually doing the same thing. We didn't play um what was that one destruction the one that um links on on your turn yeah yeah, yeah and he floats uh, a brick. yeah he's a brick and we're only playing one. <laughs> same for the dd <clears throat> yep and then for the non-engine pat says this is not non-engine but i'm telling him this is non-engine uh for the non-engine we played three fenrir three ash three book three Emperor, um and two talents so i'm a big fan of fenrir because 
I feel like if a deck breaks, but you're drawing like Fenrir with all these other non-engines, you still have a way a way to win the game. Uh, this is a plus one, it attacks for game, the battle phase gives you advantage, and it's big. I have a theory that the only reason Fenrir is not played a three in every deck is because OCG has it banned. Yeah, like, Fenrir is one of the best cards in the game. You special summon it, and it, like, act it gets something activated, it flips cards. Um, it's just one of the best cards in the game. Uh, we played no thrust. Um, I was pretty convinced that thrust was good, but it's only really good going second. The only thing that this deck hurts too <clears throat> sometimes is the ash. So if they're gonna ash me, I just want to talents and draw or look at their hand. I don't really want to thrust and set anything. Um, so that, that's why I went with no thrust. I just wanted the two talents. Uh, we used to play rise heart um, for like this Draco sack combo, but. Like we said, it was we can't pass the one. It's just break. normal summons. Yeah, it's a normal, and and the brick thing. Yeah, yeah. You, like you don't want to drive by itself and it breaks. So um, we just went with the three fender because it's just a really good card. Try to take the one brick. Yeah. We're pretty serious. We're not. We're not showing away from that. <laughs> 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 and for the extra deck, um, we went with two Yama, uh, two Anguish, two Rage. Um, two, I felt like two was good on the Yama. Two was around the Rage. Um, we played two of these, I don't know, it's, I feel like when it comes to, like, a grind game, two of the Archetype cards are usually good, you usually go into them a lot. I like this card a lot, it usually breaks board, you go right into him. Um, He's the most common thing. Did, off did you miss yeah. the third Yama or no? No. 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 Okay. No. Nah. Uh, maybe I, you would start, if, if Unchained becomes, like, more played, a third Yama might be needed, because in the mirror match it is kind of grindy. And one of the better plays to do in the mirror match is to... Is to use like rage on them, yeah, to make your another Yama, uh, just to go plus, and then on your turn, just to really have a better clapback. You don't really care to disrupt anything that makes it like plus. Like uh, I went against Pack, and he would just like have to use a lot of cards to answer things, but I would just let him do it and just keep adding cards to my hand and keep special summoning things. So when on my turn, I would just try to kill him or just anguish the board and unicorn the board so he doesn't float. Um, but yeah, and then we play one abomination. I some we summon this sometimes. Yeah, it's not that common just because there aren't that many free monsters, but it is it has the highest win percentage yeah, of any card in the game. <laughs> and, and it pops three cards, like and going second, it's really good. You can bring it back too off the Yama. Um, it, you, you obviously got to play the one. Uh, and then we played uh, Unicorn of Cerebus. Uh, unicorn, I didn't use either much. Yeah, I didn't use either much. I played the mirror. I don't know if Pat did, but the unicorn comes up in the mirror. Yeah, uh, unicorn came up like once or twice for me, like the whole tournament, but it was important, I guess, when it yeah. did. Yeah, same, same with me. When I summoned it against Pat, it was just to spin stuff. But yeah, I don't care for Cerebus. I think we don't need to play this anymore. Um, we played it just... I don't even know why we played this. It was... We just thought we needed to play one. <laughs> it was because we were testing other stuff. Yeah, and, it was we, a theme. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we played the one Mudcracker. Uh, never it's not very good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, it feels like it should be good in this deck. Um, and I feel like that's one of the opportunities. I think you should play Griffin. Yeah, we should have probably played Griffin. Like, that's I don't know. I, I don't think... I don't like the Griffin stuff very much. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't like it either, but... It's I'm a not, big commitment. Yeah, but bro, we'll cut the this. Come on. Let's <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of unneeded extra I play Cerberus, not Griffin. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of unneeded extra deck cards. Yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff you don't really need. You really just like... Re you really just want some of these. Yeah, these <laughs> guys are just like insane cards. And then uh, Abomination is insane in your extra deck, so, or in your main deck that like blows up stuff. So there's just a lot of ways to tap a game with these guys. Uh, but yeah, Buncracker, we didn't really summon it. Azalea... Also didn't summon uh, it very much. Really summon it. I summoned it like once when it would be like plus to take one and pop one yeah, but most of the time best. yeah most of the time you're just taking one when they have one card on the field though and you can go, also out like there can only be one yeah yeah it was good for there can only be one too um but yeah most of the time when you rage you just go into this guy he's good follow-up and if they don't out him um if they do out him you get the plus one if they don't you just suck up a card on the turn and start with abomination and our exceeds were uh this Darius. Ring, yeah, Darius. Uh, so I don't know his name. I don't know this guy's name yet. <laughs> King Diddy, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, King Caesar and Zeus. Um, yeah, this card actually won us the top 16 uh, just because in the battle phase it does do some damage. Uh, so I was able to do damage for me to be able to win the game. Uh, but most of the time you're like summoning this guy over him to make uh, to have four materials and then be able to go into Zeus. Uh, but I didn't really do that much. I didn't really summon this guy that much or this one. Um, Oh, I did summon him in the mirror match. I think this could come up in the mirror match more. This card's good against Pearly. 
I didn't play them for a week. Um, and then the Zeus, you know, I, I don't know. Did you summon Zeus? It's, I think it's only really comes up against Cash. Like when we were testing it against Cash, it came yeah, up a lot. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I never summoned it against anything other than Cash. Um, and then for the side deck, me, we played the three Drolls and the three Nibs. For uh, this deck, it feels like it struggles a little more with like big combo decks like Manadium and you know things like that and so we wanted to kind of side to heavier for combo decks yeah uh we had problems with the combo decks they just special summon a lot and they keep going and it's not <laughs> like we floodgate you out we just put up like multiple interruptions that have good follow-up um so we like we like playing against like the grind decks that's why yeah we just got a side heavy for them um, I played two thrusts, but I think Pat played, uh... Yeah, I played three. He played the three thrusts. Why'd you play two? I only had two ulties. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't gonna play the secret late. That was Shout crazy. out, we broke! Yep. Uh, and then, yeah, we played, uh, thrust targets. Um, two Lightning Storm, Harpies, and Herald. Uh, I didn't really use this card that much. I used it once in top four, I lost, so that's my only experience with it. <laughs> I might cut it. Um... These were good. This is good against Pearly. I use this for like um, the Rescue Ace deck and Labyrinth. Uh, these cards are insane against them. It just like destroys all four of their back row when you're just playing against them. Uh, Grind Lee with an Unchained deck, which is really good. Uh, I kind of like Harpies against Pearly too. Yeah, Harpies against Pearly is really good. Uh, I also cited it for the, the Field Spell with my friend. Um, and then I played the three Book of Eclipse. And yeah, the difference was Pat was the, the, one, the third thrust for the uh, Book of Eclipse, but yeah, I like Book of Eclipse a lot. It was good against Pearly. Um, I thought that I was we were gonna probably have to play some Pearly players in top cut. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was crazy, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I'm gonna have these three play Chris <laughs> <Ronnie."> <laughs> they didn't need them. <laughs> but unfortunately, they didn't make it there. Um, but yeah, that's why I decided these unfortunate for you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, that's pretty much the deck. Um, yeah, shout outs again to Pat. To, he came a week early. We tested the whole time. It was pretty much like I would go to work. I'd come home. We'd test till like 3, 4 in the morning. I'd leave back to work at 7 and we'd do it for like five days straight. <laughs> the grind don't stop. Yeah, we <laughs> didn't do much other than that. Um, and shout out to Hani. Shout out to Chris, Ruben, the champion first time. I'm really happy for him. Yes, sir. Um, he, he definitely deserves it. He's always like down to test. He's always down to come get me to work and like get stuff done. Um, and he I was really like three it. hours away. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he literally will come three hours just to <laughs> test with us, just because we're telling him to, and come pick me up, and then we'll go and get together and do this. Um, Shout out to Kamal. He's not here right now. I wish he was. Um, you know, he's one of my best friends, always helping me. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, we'll see you guys next time. See ya.